One thing I would say is that in Connecticut, um, the child does have a right to receive an education. Mm -hmm. um, as Anne Marie said, between the ages of five and high school graduation or age 21, um, it's not simply a privilege, it is a right. And I think that's very important because in varieties of circumstances, children could be excluded from school. Mm -hmm. And there are protections if there's some reason to think that a child may be excluded from school. There are some protections. There has to be a certain level of fairness involved. There has to be notice involved. And that's because education, public education, is a right. Okay, so if so, in cases where a child might be acting out in school and the school repeatedly suspends that child or take the child out of the classroom and puts a child in some detention center or whatever it is and the child is not getting instruction, mm -hmm. the parents have recourses in yes. that case? Okay, and what would be the what would that recourse be? I just want to underscore, back up and underscore what Mildred said because sure. I think it's important for parents to realize that it's not the right to an education is actually written into the Connecticut Constitution. So it's, a, it's taken very seriously, mm -hmm. and it is a, a very fundamental right in this state. Um, it's, it's not just something that's written in the statute, but the state is responsible for ensuring that every child in this state has access to public education. So parents need to understand that, that they have an absolute right for their child to be educated the way and that the child should have um, access to education all the way until they're 18, graduate or 21. Okay, so if, now if a child is getting into trouble at school and yeah. is being put in a room, the child might not go home and tell the parents. Right. How, what are some of the things a parent can do to check on what is happening in school to make sure the child is getting instruction. The parent has a right to the child's education records. Okay. The parent is in control of the education records for their child up until the child is 18. Okay, so the parent has a right to um, get access to, the parent has a right to actually look at the child's grades and marks and things. They actually have a right to have a copy of the record. Okay, how often should they ask for this? Well, they should, once they ask for it, they should ask and keep a copy at home and then get updates regularly. So, for instance, every marking period, mm -hmm. the parent would have a right to have the, a copy of the report card. Mm -hmm. They should receive the grades of, of tests and essays and any other projects that the child is required to complete. Um, in the case of discipline, parent has a right to know about the discipline immediately after it happens, within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and did I leave anything out, Mildred? So, so the parent has a right to know about any kind of a discipline. Yes. So if, so if a child is being, is being put in, in suspension mm -hmm. and is put off in a room someplace and not getting instructions, um, the parent should know that, but also the parent can um, ask that the school or even demand that the child get the lesson that the child is not getting in the classroom, that that lesson be provided in wherever accommodation the child is being placed. Right, right. Um, I think that sometimes schools have policies that the parent has to come to the school for the parent-teacher conference mm -hmm. to get a report card. And that can make it difficult um, because as we know, People have to work, um, and parents are not always available during the times when the conferences are held. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important if the parent has a time conflict to get in contact with the teacher, make other arrangements to get the report card. The other thing I would add to Anne Marie's point about getting the records, getting information, is that nowadays kids are tested, 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> and there are records of all those tests, and um, the parent should be given copies of the testing results so that the parent can see whether the child appears to be making progress or not. Okay, but here is my point, Mildred Ann Marie. It takes six weeks, each marking period is six weeks. If a child is not get, if the parents has to wait for that six weeks mm -hmm. to get the report card to know whether the child is 
performing or even getting instructions or not, the child can fall behind significantly and a lot of time is lost. Um, but we're not saying that. The, the other piece goes back to what we said before, which is that the parent's an equal partner in the education. So the parent can call and speak to the teacher or speak to the principal in the uh -huh. intervening time period to find out how their child is progressing. Okay. And whether the student is, whether their child is learning and keeping up and all of those things that every parent wants to know about their child. Okay, so, so we're saying to parents, in order to be fully engaged in your child's education, especially if you have a child who has been having difficulty, or you know that uh, your child doesn't seem to be you know, doing homework and right. all this, that you have a responsibility to check with the school yes. to find out what is happening with your child. And you should ask, you should check the child's uh, uh, book bag, yes. make sure you know what the report, you know, the, the assignments are, to look to see if the child has completed assignments yes. and all of this. So you, the parent, um, you do have a responsibility to monitor the education process yes. for your child. Right? Right. And I like the point about looking through the book bag because kids who are having any type of difficulty at school frequently mm -hmm. don't want the parent to know about it. Um, and so they will hide notices, they'll hide their papers that have the D's and the F's on them. Um, and it's important, I think, for the parent to take that initiative early on and to just make that a pattern. Yeah. You know, recently, um, this there was a there was a school where the entire ninth grade, not one child got promoted to the tenth grade, and there are parents who are saying, "How could this happen? I didn't know my child wasn't performing um, up to grade level because mm -hmm. if the child was performing at grade level, the child would have been promoted to the tenth grade." And so you're saying that that can be avoided if parents are vigilant and that parents need to be vigilant. Yes. And that what responsibility does the school have, if any, to call parents and say, your child is not, before the school year ends, your child is not going to be promoted because he or she has not been doing. Does the school have a responsibility to do that? Usually the school does do that. Um, the, but Mildred was, as Mildred was saying, sometimes students do not want their parents to know that they're not performing as mm -hmm. expected. Mm -hmm. And there are times when a student will lose things um, <laughs> yes. out of the book bag and lose papers. Mm -hmm. And then they become more creative as they get older. And sometimes if there's a common password to the voicemail system, um, students will erase the messages that they don't want their parents to get. So oh. they'll erase the message notifying the parent that the student did not go to school in case of school cuts. Oh. And, or they'll erase the message, that's the phone call from the principal saying, I need you to come to school because Johnny or Susie misbehaved and did X, Y, or Z. So that's another reason why there needs to be direct communication, open and constant communication directly between the parent and the school. And it goes both ways. 